This is Jonathan Agoff here for Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Johnny Nelson here at Box Park Wembley ahead of Riyadh against Turchi this Saturday. Johnny, uh, how are you finding Box Park first of all? Oh, I like it here. I've just got caught out actually. I ordered myself some food when we're live on air and my beeper went off. So uh, that, that, that blew me out. Still got my food though. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you go for? Chicken ram. Chicken ram. Um, Johnny, we are here obviously for Riyadh against Turchi. First of all, how did you find uh, his power on the pads? I saw you doing a little segment for you know Scott. What? He's actually naturally very, very strong. And I mean like little tip-tap shots. And uh, I, I chuckled because it reminds me of uh, other heavyweights that had that kind of punch power heavyweights. But he's got, he's got a nice whip, got a nice whip in his shot. Even though you were doing sort of a little segment and you were sort of uh, having a chat, he was still pretty focused on sort of his job. Have you seen sort of a difference in his mindset since he's kind of joined with boxing? I think it's professionalism. He's got a chance to be get, get momentum in his career, get the fights going. That's what any fighter wants, especially at his stage in touchy distance of, of potentially getting a world title fight. So and he's and he's done everything that's 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 guaranteed that to, that's solidified that way. You think well, you know, he actually deserves the shot. What do you know about Turchi? What do you think he brings that's different for Riyadh on Saturday? Uh, experience Southpaw, yes, he lost on a split decision to McCarthy. Um, uh, can punch, um, uh, so he's heavy handed, so he brings another bag of problems to, um, to, um, to Richard. So in doing that, so in, do so in doing that, I just think to myself, um, um, I just think to myself, he, he's just got to—he's just got to be smart. He's got to be sharp on it because he's got an experienced fighter there. You told me the other week your your fight of the night, Zach Chelly, Jermaine Brown. Have you changed that? No, nah, not at all. You've got two fighters that are familiar with each other. Two fighters that actually know what they're they're. Um, uh, one fighter thinks he's a more of a done deal than the other. And then Shelly thinks, the way Shelly talks, Shelly's talking like, listen, I did his number in the gym, I did his number in the amateurs, so I'll have his number again. You know, so it, to me it's going to be a good fight. And just talk me through Vidal Riley. Obviously he's a really uh, good amateur and then he sort of did uh, the YouTube stuff, but he's still got the pedigree. How? What do you want to see from him over the next year? The problem with Vidal is he's not getting enough momentum in his career because he's a good fighter. Um, and I've seen the talent that he's got, the talent that he's, he's got, what he's capable of doing under his sleeve. Um, but um, so it's just getting momentum. Uh, in, in what he's capable of doing. If he gets that momentum, then, then we'll see how good this, this young man actually really is. Johnny, uh, news uh, last week that Robert Garcia is Anthony Joshua's new trainer. Uh, surprised? No, no, Anthony Joshua's just trying to find his feet with someone that he feels comfortable with, that he trusts, that trusts him, that gets him, that he gets. So if it's Garcia, it's Garcia. He's made decisions that work for him. And, uh, and and so again, you know, I'm quite. He's not an idiot. You know, they picked somebody that actually works for him. He's travelled the world looking for coaches, somebody to, to do the job for him. So Garcia's got the job. John Garcia's the man that's moved over to the UK for this job. I remember you said before the Ruiz rematch, you were a thousand percent sure that Joshua would come through. it. What percentage are you at now? This is a tougher call. Uh, I do believe Anthony Joshua has the has has the has the ability to beat Lucy. But he's got to change the whole mindset, attitude, approach to this. In doing that, I think uh, uh, Joshua can pull it off. But, but if, if he goes in there with the same mindset he did before to try and outbox such a slick boxer, uh, then, you know, why you fight somebody at, at their own game? You make them fight your game. He goes in with that, he gets a win. Is it enough time, do you think? I mean, August 20 is the reported date for the fight. It's not confirmed. But do you think that's enough time uh, to gel with each other to get what Garcia wants? Well, you're only just getting the news about Garcia. That, 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 that union could have been going quite a while. Because remember, it's not like they just met last week. You know, they've met a long time before this. And, uh, and, and it's just they've decided now to let, let that information out. Johnny, Garcia against Tank Davis. Who do you think would win that fight? Uh, wow. Uh, wow, that's a good fight, man. That's a really good fight. Garcia, young, uh, uh, he's got it all going from me. Just that like annoying, good kid. Uh, Tank, I must have leaned towards Tank. I think Tank has that, that, that TNT, he has that experience, he has that something about him. But it'd be a good learning fight for, for, for both of them. Um, 
And, but it's, it's an, an intriguing fight. So Devin Haney uh, dominate Cambosis uh, on Saturday. Did you watch the fight and what did you make of it? Watch the fight. Devin Haney showed an, an, another size to his his, uh, his repertoire. He uh, excellent boxing, excellent jab, excellent smarts control, discipline. Lots of right fight to get the win he wanted uh, in the fashion he did. So he's got to be my estimation. He's just ticked another box. Does he beat them all, in your opinion? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, he does. Um, I don't think there's anybody out there to, to actually prove otherwise. You know, obviously, everybody's going to prove that. Um, but so far, you can't really argue the case. And, you know, obviously, Cambosis has a rematch clause. That he said he'll take... I mean, I what it. could he do to, to change... I don't get it. Listen, you're going to take advantage of a situation, a chance, a second chance. And, and so, so Cambosis thinking, you know what? I've got the rematch clause. I'm going to take it. I'm going to get paid for it. I'm going to go in there and give it what I've got. Uh, and if it don't work, I get paid again. And I realise this it wasn't luck. This guy didn't beat me by luck. This guy beat me because he was better than me on, on every level. Final question. Who do you want to see Dillian White fight when he comes back? Dillian White, proper warmonger. Dillian White, of course. Anybody, anybody. Because Dillian White, again, he's in a position where he's still a dangerous fighter. He lost his last fight, yeah, obviously, but he's still dangerous. He's in that who needs him club. This guy's too dangerous. Now, he's been giving people a good reason to say, well, why am I boxing? You know, because he is tough, he is dangerous. Yes, he's being turned over. So, um, but Dylan White is still a dangerous operator. Just a final word on your man, on your mate, Ricky Hatton, got into great shape for this exhibition. Uh, what have you made of sort of, you know, how how great shape he's in? He's, he's really looking good. Well, I think Ricky should have a, get pick up the phone and give Prince Nassim Hamid a call uh, <laughs> and say, yo, listen, if I can do it, you can do it. Let's lose a bit of timber. Uh, but Ricky, he's bounced something. He's, he, I think it's great. I think I just think, why do you not manage to stay like that? Because he's done it before, gone up and gone down. And uh, he looks in brilliant condition. What a great ad work to say, look what he's done. He's got a, an exhibition with Barrera. And um, yeah, I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to it. You're not going to be on the undercard, are you? Nah, man, I'm out of that.